Hi, my name is Kevin, and today I'm going to go over uh, talking about EVENG, which is an emulated virtual environment um, software that allows you to emulate uh, networking gear such as like Cisco, Palo Alto, Fortinet, and other things like that, Windows Server, Linux, um, VMs, things of that nature. Um, a comparative tool to this would be something like GNS3, which I wrote in a blog article about that you can find on letmetechyou.com. I'll be posting that here shortly. Basically, this blog is just a way for me to be able to test out different topologies and networking um, technologies that I'm uh, also just learning myself and getting into, whether it be at work or in my free time. So whenever you get a chance, yeah, just go ahead and um, go over to Let Me Tech You and if you have any questions, you can always reach me on social media, things like that. I'll have some uh, some ways to reach me on the uh, website here shortly as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just log into my local installation. I'm actually just using um, ESXi. I have a local server that I keep at home that's that this is running on. And it doesn't take a lot of resources. The setup's pretty fast. And I just actually just ported this installation over from a, uh, an ex a different server that I had. So some of the stuff didn't kind of translate over well. Um, I had some configs that got kind of wiped. But uh, as you see, it actually took me directly into a, a lab that I was just previously working on. This is just a VRF lab that's actually on my blog as well. Um, if you look and see, the, I have some devices running. So it actually shows it. The, the, this is the community edition, so you don't actually get some of the different features as far as uh, being able to close out of labs while um, devices are running and things like that. So I'm, let me go ahead and just shut these down real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and stop these this out of the way here. And if you want to know the differences, uh, EVE and G has a paid version as well. The community version um, is 100% free. You can go to their website, ev-ng.net, and they will allow you to see the differences. Uh, it's a great tool if you're just starting out or if you're just a just a regular user looking to study. Um, the Community Edition just does some other cool things uh, that I'll kind of get into here shortly. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this lab here. So you've, as you can see, um, this is where your file manager will be. So if you're working on like different types of topologies, you can segment them that way. You can work with multiple instances within the same folder. But, you know, as you can see, I kind of separate mine out by the whatever I'm particularly trying to learn. So I got an OSPF one, um, VRF, high availability, site to site, um, Cisco firewall one, things of that nature so you know this is so if you're wanting to create an add a new lab you just create this click on this button up here put in a name and this is just a way to logically um, separate some of the stuff that you do um, if you're not working on a lot you can kind of put them in there but it does kind of get jumbled up um, as far as like your labs and you're having to zoom in and zoom out so I'm going to go into one of these that I'm already working on here so let me find one here Uh, let me see. Yeah, I could do. Yeah, I'll do this one. So I'll open this one up here. So this is an Ether Channel one. Uh, I, I did a blog article on this one actually a couple months ago. Might actually be on this first page. Uh, if you want to check it out, it's on my you know my blog. Yeah, here you go. So I I did a just different type of um, Ether Channel configuration. Um, and some low balancing um, articles on these topologies here. The great thing about EVNG is it's 100% uh, web based, so it just makes it a lot easier on the type of resources that you need um, when you're working with it. I'm going to go ahead and start these up. Well, actually, before I start them up, let me just talk about some of the uh, um, the objects and information on the left hand side here. So to add an object. You literally just click on add an object node. You can do network, pictures, shapes, things like that. For the most part, you'll probably be in the section where it says node. Now, the only ones you'll have access to is the ones that are blue, but you'll need images for those. So, as you can see, I've only worked with Cisco. So, you'll see the 
the uh, you'll see the um, images is blue, and then when you click on those, it'll give you the option to add as you know however many nodes you want. And depending on your resources, that'll determine how good that they work. Things like that. You know how many you can run at once. Um, you know, like I said, with the free version, you only get so many nodes per um, lab, so you have to kind of segment those out depending on your the topology you're working on. And then, so I'll, I'll just go ahead and do two here, and I'll hit save. And as you can see, that these both kind of came up there in the corner. And to edit any of these, you would just right click and hit edit. And you can add and maybe more RAM to it. Um, you don't want to change these things too much because uh, it could affect how the uh, particular device runs um, or it could not run at all. And so I'm actually going to start both of these. And just to show you one thing that it does make it a little tough with Community Edition, once your nodes are started, you can't connect these up. So as you can see, that little orange icon that's that lets you drag where you want your connection to be goes away so with the pro version it allows you to do that but you can highlight both of these and it's going to go ahead and hit stop selected and those will shut down now i can take these connections and choose you know where i want these to go then I can go through and then turn, you know, both of these on, select them, hit start selected. Now that I have both of these selected, I'll go ahead and open this up here. And you'll see that these will start to, you know, it'll just open up in a new tab. As you can see, I had another tab up from another lab that got disconnected. But you'll see that it'll start to run through the boot process here. And we can go over to the other one as well, just to see where that one's at. And these ones, I haven't really, these 1710s, uh, you know, I, let me start these as well. And like I said, depending on how many you're going to be starting, could, yeah, so you can see these actually got down to, the initial configuration. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit no on this. Just, you know, not going to go into the initial configuration. Hit no there. We got our interfaces coming up. All right. Now, as you can see, we are on a web based tab talking to our device and we can now start to just configure and do whatever we kind of want with these so you know everything you would typically do with depending on the vendor you know like I said mostly everything I've worked with so far inside of this has been Cisco you can kind of do everything that you need to do so you know I can do a show run you know see my running config you know look at my interfaces you know I can go in there and Interface, Ethernet zero, no shut, show IP interface brief. So now you can see that those both came up. You know, I can add an uh, you know, an IP address to that interface, things like that, show IP route. So everything is kind of still, you know, at your fingertips now. You know, like I said, this is the free version, but I haven't ran into really any problems that kind of deters me from not that to needing to go to the pro version. The only nuance I would say would be not being able to change your um, uh, links, link states, to, you know, when your devices are up. Because, it, you know, if you're in the middle of, you know, configuring something, you know, you don't want to have to shut down your devices. And But at least you can copy run start, you know get get the the config saved turn it off turn it back on real quick typically once your devices are already up you're probably already going to have your links you know connected to new connected unless you're you know adding new devices and you know throughout your topology 
Now, some other things that uh, is pretty cool is you can do um, so you can do some captures. They have it to where you can capture using Wireshark um, on your. Now, you will need to go to EVNG's website, go to download, go to the Windows client side or Apple or Linux, depending on which one what OS you're using. And you're going to download. This is going to give you the ability to use PuTTY. Um, so instead of having to use the uh, browser, you can use your PuTTY or whatever client you're using to SSH in. And then you can use do Wireshark to uh, do some captures to be able to see what kind of traffic is going across the network. So, you know, that's just one another good, cool feature. And just to kind of talk about some of this other stuff here, once you have nodes that are already set up, you can click on these nodes and just, you know, you can rename them from here, change the boot image. You can change some other information and in, in icons and stuff from here. And then there's also a, a startup config thing. So say that you're working on this topology, you want to share it with someone or you just want to back it up. You can export your um, config and it'll just save it as the file that you can then import into later. Which, if you didn't click onto the startup configs, if I turn these on, which it doesn't seem to be, there we go. So, yeah, as you can see, I could have configs set up in here to then always apply whenever that, you know, these start up. Um, like I said, I imported this over from another environment so some of the stuff on these probably got wiped out i wouldn't imagine i haven't started everything up as you know just only been a day um some more actions here you know you can wipe all nodes this is just you know kind of the things you would get when you already right click and do stuff from here you can export um you know you can also copy and paste you know directly into the tab um, like I said before, unless if you want to work within the same, some people like to keep their topologies, you know, within the same um, lab instead of having to separate separate them out by folder. One thing you can do is you can come over here and minimize this to make it smaller, and then have multiple labs throughout this uh, folder. Like I said, I, I don't really like it that way because it kind of gets um, a little confusing because you're having to zoom in and zoom out all over the place and just makes it a lot easier when you kind of also when you're studying you know directly what folder to go back to when you're you know needing to reference something and then that's kind of basically it I mean like I said everything else the only other thing you can't do is you can't close the lab when you have nodes running um, you need to you know you'll have to just power those off just make sure you save the config just right click and hit stop selected and then those will stop now you're probably wondering well how do I get the uh, the, the objects into the actual full um, into the node to be able to use them so the one thing that the uh, they do make a little diff difficult is you will have to SSH into the box to um, drop those files into a folder but it's not hard at all like I'll use a program called FileZilla and basically literally all you have to do is put the put the IP address in and then put the uh, username in and then the password and then just a port number for SSH and you don't need to save unless you want to accept the key I just do always trust I'm on my local home network and then what you'll do is you'll just go back to the root of the folder go into the op directory the unit lab and they let's see I believe add-ons yeah so now that like I said I've only used Cisco uh, their documentation if you go into the documentation here they have a how to 
And depending on what you're working on, they may tell you to put it in something different. So let's say, for, ex for example, Palo Alto, they will tell you how those should be imported. So, you know, as you can see, it looks like we're making a directory, going into that directory. Then we got the OVA file. Then we're going to convert the disk to the Q cal2 format so it's going to go into here so q e m u bin and convert so it looks like you're going to still be working within this q um opt directory this opt directory here um but instead of going into the unet lab you might be into somewhere else up here yeah up in here but that's fine, yeah. So at least you know you need to be in here, and then if you have any um, difficulties, you'll you know go to EV and G's uh, documentation. But like I said, for you know my purposes, I'm typically inside of here, and then I got my, as you can see, some of my um, different types of uh, ASAs and you know stuff like that in the different folders. Yeah, and, and, and that's really it. Like I said, you know, um, you know, if you have any questions, you know, like I said, use their documentation. They have a good community as well um, that you can kind of follow. And, you know, like I said, I'll be putting up a blog post detailing some other, you know, um, features between this and GNS3. I personally, when I've used GNS3, it was a little bit of a hassle setting it up, you know, initially. I didn't get a chance to use it as much as I wish I could have. I had intended on using it, and then I found G, uh, EV and G, and I like the fact that it's web-based. I can use it directly in the browser. And then outside of that, once I uh, finished you know, setting it up, I think it only took me like 10 minutes to get this set up and going. So, you know, once, you, you know, once you're uh, set up and going, you know, it's just as easy as that. Uh, thanks again for listening. Like I said, check out my blog, letmetechu.com. I'll also be posting this on YouTube. Thanks again. Have a good day.